Grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Debbie. Helene. Milton. No, not the names of people, but the names of some very severe storms that struck Florida this past year. And those last two give us a new perspective, a new appreciation for the psalm that we just read, which goes like this. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Amen. Now that same psalm is what Martin Luther is expounding upon when he writes a hymn in the 1500s, which began like this. Ein fester Berg ist unser Gott. A mighty fortress is our God. Amen? A mighty fortress is our God. As we go on to sing that hymn, we understand that Martin Luther is talking about more than a fortress against our meteorological storms, but also a fortress against our greatest fears. So whatever it is that you fear the most, for that, God is a mighty fortress. God is your refuge and your strength. So I have a question for you. What are you so afraid of? Maybe you are here today as that 40% of people who are actually afraid of cyclonic storms. It's called ilopsophobia. And that's a very founded fear after what we've just gone through, amen? Or perhaps today, you are among the 79% of Americans who are afraid of a corrupt government. But maybe you have FOGO, fear of growing old. 87% of people have fear of at least one of the things that we associate with aging be it a loss of physical ability, a loss of memory, being a burden to others, or being alone. Or maybe today, you are of that 30% who simply just have a fear of failing. Failing in your career, failing in a relationship, or failing maybe a very critical and important life change that you must do. Whatever your greatest fear is today, I want you to understand this. That is how they get you. Fear is used to control people. Y'all hear me? Fear is used to control people. That is something that we all witnessed during the pandemic back in 2020. In fact, as I did some research on this, I found a few ways, multiple ways in which fear is used to control people. Number one, social control. Fear can be used to manipulate people into accepting measures they might not normally choose social control. Number two, political control. Fear can be used to motivate people to vote for a certain candidate or to drive votes away from an opponent. Sound familiar? And then there's media. The media can be amplified. Fear can be amplified by the media. Fear can be amplified by the media, which can sensationalize rare and extreme events. For example, the news can deliver statistics without putting them into context, which can put people on edge. 
But then there is another thing that Martin Luther himself experienced, another way of control. And that was religion. Yeah, religion. Here's what I found. Fear of divine judgment can be used to instill power in religious officials. For example, religious officials can perform rituals to appease an angry God and demand payment from the faithful in exchange for removing sins. What does that sound like to you? It sounds a lot like what Martin Luther was experiencing on October 31st, 1517, as he went up and nailed 95 theses to the church doors of the Wittenberg Castle Church. Amen, amen. And, and with, with this, we see Martin Luther raging and arguing against this idea that a person can actually use money or cheap coins to actually give us salvation and take away sin. So Martin Luther stood and challenged this, and that set off a change in the world called the Reformation, which we are remembering today. See, in this hymn, Martin Luther is talking about this freedom now that we have from fear. He talks about how the cruel oppressor's rod is broken, and that rod is fear by which they cry to control you. As Martin Luther, in his studies, in his pursuit, and his seeking of understanding this gospel, this God who is refuge, came to understand that he was free from all of that oppression, free from the fear because he had a mighty fortress as his God. So this morning, this is what I want to all to hear, is that God is your fortress. So why are you so afraid? Even though you might be a storm, the raging storm is now brewing outside. We will fear not because God is our refuge. Even though a corrupt government may get into office, we will fear not because God is our strength. And even though you may have this fear of growing old, we will fear not because God is ever present in all ages of our life. And amen, if today you have a fear of failure, a fear of just not making it, we will what? Fear not because God is our strength, amen. A mighty fortress is our God. God is our refuge and our strength. Therefore, we will fear not. And that passage goes on to say it like this. We will fear not, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. We will fear not. But today... I'll be the first one to confess that when we find ourselves without a refuge, without a fortress, we have a lot of reasons to fear. That was something that my family and I, Junko, Mika, and I discovered not in Florida during a hurricane, but out in Wyoming back on September 17th. We were at Devil's Tower National Monument, and we have a picture of us together there. You might recognize Devil's Tower from the Spielberg film, Close Encounters with the Third Kind. Well, that was the site. Three weeks before we visited there, that was the site of a devastating supercell that brought in winds that were like 50 mile an hour gusts and baseball size hail. And so as we were there, we were shocked. We were in awe of the devastation that was left after that storm. 
I mean, we saw trees strewn about, some snapped in the middle at the trunk, and some completely uprooted, scattered everywhere. And we wondered what it must have been like to have been a person maybe on a hike out there in that park while it was happening. Well, we didn't have to wonder very long. While we were on the Red Beds Trail, walking on a cliffside trail. Suddenly, the sky turned black. And we heard this eerie howl rolling across the valley towards us, driving with it this orange cloud. And suddenly, we were enveloped. The air turned red around us. And we felt sand stinging against our face and against our skin. And we were being walloped back and forth as we were on this narrow trail by the edge of a cliff. As we tried to walk, the wind was so strong, it was like tropical storm winds, we thought that supercell had returned. It was difficult for us to progress in walking because the wind was so strong, we thought we were going to be knocked off our feet. Martin Luther discovered and understood very much what it was like to be in a storm, what it was like to be in a situation where you, as you try to walk that straight and narrow, just don't have the strength to overcome. Martin Luther was afraid in his storm. He was terrified that he was going to lose his salvation. And he made all of these efforts of his own trying to save himself. He tried everything. He fasted, he deprived himself of sleep, he beat himself with a whip, he got down on his knees and prayed so earnestly that his knees actually bled. There was an occasion or two when he even lay naked out into the snow. But even still, as he found himself naked in the elements, he was afraid. We have a psalm today. Psalm 46, written by the sons of Korah to put to music that God is our refuge and our strength. We are today being called out of the cold, out of the snow, out of the storm, and into this safe place. When we are brought into this safe place, we fear not, even though the storms rage around us, because we know that God is the wall around us. God is our fortress. We know that God is our strength. God is our refuge. So today, we're being called out of the storm, church. We're being called out of all those things that cause us to be afraid. We're being called into this place where God will save us. This is what it's like. The psalm continues this way. When you go into that space, it is to be there to see Jesus. In verses 10 and 11, it says this, and I was in fifth grade this past week, and they said, you know, Pastor Tony, what's your favorite verse? This is probably one of them. Psalm 46, 10 and 11. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our, listen to this, our fortress. We in Wyoming were at a place called Devil's Tower. We were very much aware of the forces of evil in our world, the spiritual powers in the air. It was a sacred, it still is today, a sacred Native American ground where they come and hang on the trees symbols and, and all kinds of amulets and things like that praying to the deceased spirits. So while we were there, we were aware of a very powerful foe. Martin Luther also understands about this foe. And here's what he says in the hymn that we sang. The old satanic foe has sworn to work us woe. With craft and dreadful might, he arms himself to fight. On earth, he has no equal. 
No strength of ours can match his might. We would be lost and rejected. But now a champion comes to fight whom God himself has elected. On that mountain at Devil's Tower, we met this champion. Because we could not move, the only thing we could do was just to remain still. The wind was so strong, I just had my family squat down like this to lower our center of gravity as the wind blew past us. We could not move. But then as things started to die down, as things got a little quieter, we stood up and we started to make our walk. We were still yet 30 minutes away from shelter. But as we walked, we made a human chain. I held Junko's hand, my wife, and Junko held our daughter's hand, Mika, and we walked this trail, and we pressed through the wind. And the whole time we were walking, I just kept reminding Junko, I'm here, I'm with you. And she said to me this morning, as we were talking about this, she says at that moment, she remembered something. That in the storm, Jesus was there with his disciples. Jesus is with us in the storm. And as the storm was raging, Jesus stood up, it said, and he said to the wind and the waves, quiet, be still. And we thought he was only talking to the wind and the waves. He was also talking to us. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted. Jesus is our mighty fortress. He has power over the wind and waves. He has power over death. He has power even over that old satanic foe. Jesus is with us. He is our fortress. As we are still, we see him demonstrate his power over all things. In Christ, we have. In our storms, in our moments of the greatest fear, we have a refuge and a mighty fortress. Amen. But Jesus doesn't just leave us here out and exposed in the elements, out and exposed to the wind and the rain and the hail. Jesus actually tells us that he will give us a helper as he ascends to heaven. And in our, Old, in our New Testament lesson, actually in our gospel lesson, we have this reference where Jesus is telling his disciples, I will send you a helper. God is an ever-present, what? Help in our trouble. In our trouble, God has sent us a helper, a counselor, an advocate, a paraclete, the Holy Spirit who is with us. And as Jesus says, he will dwell with you and he will be in you. This is my word of encouragement to you today. Is that today, the mighty fortress is you. The almighty God has taken his Holy Spirit and put it in a new temple that is you, the believer. Your mind, your heart, your soul, your body becomes the fortress that carries the Holy Spirit. And by his power and by your faith in him, you can accomplish all things. Through Jesus, you and I, who were weak, who were lost, who could not save ourselves, now become a mighty fortress for Christ. Together, in faith, the three of us press through the wind to our destination. We press through in faith. We press through in the strength that God gave us. We press through together as a family. And so it is with us. We lock hands in our faith today. We are a monolith in Christ, a mighty fortress that are built on the cornerstone of Jesus. And we press our way through these storms in life in the true faith, knowing that God is with us and his spirit dwells within us. We have that spirit, as Martin Luther describes it, in his word. A word that's fearful for those who don't believe it, but for you and me, it is life, it is breath, it is our courage to face our fears. God, by his spirit, by his word, has made you, church, a monolithic fortress. 
that stands even in the face of storms, in the face of Satan, you stand by faith in Christ, in Christ alone. So when Martin Luther then is pressed on his faith, he says this, here I stand, I can do no other. So today, church, we stand, stand in our faith in Christ. Martin Luther was no stranger to storms. In fact, it was because of a storm that he decided to go into ministry. He was on his way home, and a storm fell upon him suddenly, as it did upon us out in Wyoming. And his lightning bolts were coming down, the wind and everything was kicking up. He fell down on his knees, and he called out to St. Anne. And later on, he said he regretted doing that. He regretted calling on anything other than God to save him. But he's just like us. We find ourselves in a world where we're afraid, afraid of the storms, the government, growing old, afraid of failure. And in all those situations, we may find ourselves calling on things that cannot save us. Sometimes we may try to use our own strength. But we're reminded today as the wind hits us in the face, as we're being battered about on those rocky trails, that we cannot save ourselves. It is God who comes to save us, to envelop us in his fortress. But we're reminded that we have a God who gives us a helper in his Holy Spirit, who lives and dwells with us all the time, anywhere we are, so that we may stand in the midst of the challenges that we experience. So today... Remember that you have a refuge. You have strength. You have a helper in all your troubles. And that is Jesus Christ our Lord, who has come to be with us in our storms, to bring calm and to bring us peace in the salvation that he has won for us on the cross and by rising from the dead and by claiming us as his own. In the name of Jesus, today, we are a fortress, a refuge in a time of trouble. In Jesus' name, amen.